I'm excited. Yeah. Always excited to have a Mankiewicz in the house. You know that. Uh, we've had Josh. We've had Ben. Now, meet uh, the crown jewel of the Mankiewicz family. That's right. This guy, EP of Bosch, uh, House MD, House of Cards. Uh, his his uh, provenance is uh, with the Academy Award winning and nominated writers. His grandfather wrote Citizen Kane. I mean, enough already. How about it? John Mankiewicz. Hey, Hello, Marty. Sir. Yeah, it's nice <laughs> to see nice you. To be here. John, yeah. congratulations on everything you've done. A lot of people would just move to the desert and, you know, kick it. But you have a really cool new project. And I feel as though you are one of the few in Hollywood that could get this together. You've got an audible... Uh, it seems like it's a it's a, almost a radio play over seven episodes. Yeah, it was a thing. It's called The Big Lie, and it's about uh, the making of a movie called Salt of the Earth, which was made in 1953 by uh, these three. Uh, you know, they were they were self described communists. Uh, one of them had uh, they were all blacklisted. And they decided when they were blacklisted not to go live in Mexico and write under assumed names, um, but to, in the words of Paul Jericho, who's the producer, um, commit a crime that fit the punishment, uh, which was to make a, the movie they wanted to make, a very pro-union, true story about a, a copper mine strike in New Mexico, in Silver City, New Mexico. And... Um, the whole world tried to stop it. Uh, it was denounced on the floor of Congress. Uh, Howard Hughes uh, talked to all the film labs and said, don't process their film. Their sets in New Mexico were, you know, were buzzed by airplanes and people fired guns. Uh, they almost had their, uh, the place they were staying, people tried to burn it down. Um, and Paul, Jericho, who I, came to me with this idea, uh, had the idea that the only way they could have finished it, because after all, they were just writers, uh, was if the FBI guy who was following them around and trying to screw up the movie and stop it had at the last moment uh, looked away and, and been on their side. So it's, it was a movie told from the point of view of that FBI guy in 1953. That's brilliant. Um, it's really yeah. clever. I haven't seen the movie, but I mean, it, it's really a clever twist, huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful movie. The movie itself is beautiful. And um, this idea, because it, it is told from the point of view of the FBI guy, it's not a, you know, good night and good luck, which is a fine movie, message movie about what was happening during the Red Scare. Um, it's got a real plot. You know, the a, big lie we were just showing the it's on mm -hmm. audible and you can uh, subscribe and or you click on it and they'll they'll load you all seven episodes so it's this is kind of different for you this is um i was reading about it and it's mm -hmm. this uh it suggested i've heard them before there are they are out there on audible I'll, I'll, this is a platform that's done a bit of this sort of thing it's really an immersive kind of you you feel like you are you know, you're listening to, it's a full experience. You know, you have the imagery in your mind. It's not just a, it's not a reading of a book, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, it's a fully, it's, I mean, people have told me it sounds like, you know, a, a movie or an HBO show. Uh, you know, we have amazing actors. John Hamm plays the FBI guy. Brad Whitford is uh, Mike Wilson, the great Mike Wilson who wrote the script. Uh, you know, Giancarlo Esposito is, uh, plays a, a Hollywood shrink who is based on a real Hollywood shrink who would advise writers to name names because it would make them feel better. And then wow. he, would call, he would call the FBI and say who was about to break. And the, and the FBI, by the way, would have deals with realtors because they knew those people would have to sell their homes and they were getting kickbacks from realtors. Oh my God. I mean, it was that's insane. It was dark. Yeah. Wow. God, that's crazy. The whole red scare period was scary enough but to think that there were all of these other tentacles and benefits yeah. 
that were accruing to those who were part of that Red Scare. Wow. Oh, wow. What, was it hard to um, mount the kind of, like, these are screen actors that you've got, like really hot screen actors, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and they're all part of this this project, The Big Lie on Audible. Was it, did you have to convince them to do this kind of thing, like a radio play sort of thing? No, um, not really. I, I had talked to uh, a few years before this. I mean, John Hamm was always interested in this as a movie. And during COVID, I called him and I said, hey, look, let's do it as this sort of radio play for Audible. And he said, yeah, man, let's do it. And as soon as he was in, uh, no one said no, and, you know, <laughs> and I think also because the the spirit of this thing, this pro union message, and you know, a, a commentary on how, you know, what was going wrong in the in the fifties and McCarthyism was really, the actors themselves responded to it, and you know, you can see, because essentially, you know, I don't know if you if you remember you you don't remember this, but in the, the Blacklist started out, it was a anti-union tool. You know, Walt Disney, uh, you know, the animators at Disney wanted to unionize and Walt Disney said, well, no, they can't unionize, they're all communists. You know, and that's, so it was convenient. Uh, Again, it was a, it yeah. was really a, an effort to uh, avoid giving up certain things to workers, giving up money. Yeah, like really, money, yes, yeah. like getting paid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's really, it's a, it was a fascinating time in America. You know, we have this, you know, the myth of American exceptionalism and at any point you can buzz into American history and see, you know, these huge uh, flaws where the, the government turns on its own people this way, you know, and, uh, and the creative community was scared, weren't they, John? I mean, it was a, yeah, I mean, they had it initially when, they, when the, I think the, after the hearings in 47, uh, when they had, you know, the Hollywood 10, um, there was a, a group called the Committee for the First Amendment that got together and flew to Washington. And it was, it was to, to protest what, what they were, you know, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And the Committee for the First Amendment was Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and all these very high profile artists. Uh, and the studios came down so hard on them that Humphrey Bogart not only had to stop doing it, he had to write why I made a why I made a mistake and why communists are bad in you know Confidential magazine. I mean, it was it was grueling and cruel what they made people do who who stood up to this. Well, people were losing livelihoods; they were losing their homes, yeah. as you say. There was, I mean, there was a, it was at some point, and this is kind of what. I, I don't mean to, you would be, I mean, as a sort of student of all of this, be a better person to ask about this, but when parallels are drawn to, I'm seeing it in the chat, to the GOP, to the last administration, where there's sort of these loyalty tests and, you know, you're either with us or against us, and if you're against us, we're going to ruin you. I think of Vindman, you know, who reported, uh, you know, who, who testified oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, in that uh, impeachment hearing, and he pre prefaced his uh, testimony by saying, you know, I told my father, don't worry, this is America, you know, you can do this. And then, of course, the administration goes after him and ruins him, essentially, in terms of governmental benefits and all the rest. Yeah, it's a it's a very it was a very scary time, and act, and Mike Wilson, who was a sort of a god of screenwriting. I mean, he wrote Friendly Persuasion, and uh, you know, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. He wrote the first draft of The Wonderful no, wow. Life. You, you know, <laughs> winding up with um, uh, you know Planet of the Apes. He wrote, and I mean, just. Uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, which he, you know, wasn't credited on. Uh, he won the Writers Guild Laurel Award in 1976, and he gave this very elegant speech, which was basically he was trusting the younger people. If, if they saw this coming again, that they would stand up and sort of ensure that, you know, writers could write in a free society and, uh, you know, that that government can't censor opinions. And it was basically this very anticipatory thing of, uh, about cancel culture and where we are now. And, sure, sure. Know, Let me ask you a personal question, as long as I've got you, John Mankiewicz. You have not this, related uh, to Josh Rubin. 
not, yeah. <laughs> the, not related to Josh or Ben in this case. Yeah. But I do, I do want to ask you about growing up in the world, you know, right in the world of Hollywood, you know, steeped in so much of what is scripts and first drafts. And you made me think of it when you said the first draft. And I thought, oh, you know, I just suspect that you were exposed to so many of these things from a creative standpoint that uh, I'm curious just what was that what that was like? Well, I mean, how it relates to the, you know, the, it, it really gave me an appreciation for how bad the blacklist was because, you know, seeing people around you who earn a living and support a family just by having ideas and selling them and writing them up, you know, is the idea that you're going to do that is, is insane to start with. You know, I, I would, I sort of see that my dad was a writer and I could see that's all he did. I mean, he didn't have any, any backup profession. So the idea that the, that there could be a blacklist and you could say, you could say, you're not, even, you're not even allowed to try to do that anymore. You know, you, you can't even attempt to make a living as a writer is, uh, you know, it just seemed obscene to me to turn it around, you know, to tell people that. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the, the, I guess that's what I'm, I, I mean, I'm realizing as you talk about how the world of Hollywood became this place where everybody's walking on eggshells and having to do the right thing and retract things they've said and think mm -hmm. about who they've met. And, and, you know, it becomes this, uh, um, it's 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 horrifying to think about because livelihoods are really on the line. So so yeah. to, to to think that a film was produced in that environment, which is what the big lie is about, yeah, uh, it's kind of extraordinary. Oh, these guys formed the first independent film company, you know, and they raise money from their you know commie friends, you know, <laughs> about a hundred thousand dollars, and they got you know a great, uh, you know, they cast the real people who had struck in this union in New Mexico uh, to play themselves. And they brought in a ringer, Rosara Revueltas, who was just a, this great Mexican actress. And the U.S. government got her deported a, a week before she finished her work. And so they had to go shoot the film, finish the movie in Mexico on a fake call sheet, you know, and wow. smuggle the film back across the border. And then they still tried, you know, had, it was tough getting the film distributed. You know, they had to fight and sue in courts to get the film shown in maybe 10 theaters. It's just a, um, uh, what a story. You have a question, Kim, before uh, John's got to go. Before yeah. you dismiss the witness, I would yeah. was wondering, so a lot of people listen to audible books in their cars, books on tape. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking for some something interesting to pass the time while they're on long road trips. And maybe I'm living under a rock, but this is the first audio movie. I mean, we've had old radio plays back in the day, mm -hmm. but this is the first, like, it's what you have here is really a movie, but with sound. Is this the first of its kind? And do you think maybe you've uncovered a whole new genre of entertainment for people by doing this? Um, you know... One can hope, but yeah. I, I, it's part of me that thinks, and I know Audible has done a few of these, and uh, it really is, you know, we, we made it, we, we wanted this to sound like a movie, and we, and the sound guys were, sound guys had worked on, you know, huge movies, and we, yeah. you know, we have cars going from right to left in the, in the background, and the, and it's the right car. It's the right Ford from there. And I don't oh, know. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, if Howard Hughes flying an airplane and it's the con, you know, it's the Connie, yeah. whatever he, he flew. Um, all I can say is I'm entertained by it. And I know yeah. people who are, I don't know. It may be going, you're crossing a line where you actually don't need that much to tell the story. But I, I really like it. And I know Audible has done a few of these. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it is a new sort of uh, form of telling of, uh, of a story, you know. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that this was born of originally a feature film, but mm -hmm. with COVID hitting and all the rest, that you found this other way to tell the story is really cool. Yeah, it was great. And you could actually get a little deeper into the story. I had more time to tell it. Oh, sure. Of course. Of course. And, um, 
it was a very great lucky sort of serendipitous thing and I'm very grateful to john ham and all the people who yeah you've got you've got just, quite the cast quite throwing the it cast. out there you know i know we're no john ham kind of oh yes you celebrity are. here but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i'm just Speak saying yourself, Kim, we are we are audio people so you know we're radio yeah. background so next time Mark Thompson That's right. there. there oh, I see. I could be. Uh, yeah. You're saying he should have cast me in some way. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you, you off then. I mean, I like I, I, Thank I, you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Trying uh, to yeah. do a yeah. solid over here. You're yeah. the Kim's me. trying to push me to the big executive producer, and I'm uh, right cutting her off. Uh, good luck. <laughs> it's on now on Audible. The Big Lie. Seven episodes. What yeah. a story. And then I want to go back and watch the movie that it's yeah, about. You, you, yeah, you would. Um, the movie is very moving, and and I mean, also Mike Wilson wrote it, so I mean, it's it's really right. Yeah, the pedigree is it's, so it's strong. Good, yeah, yeah. Um, come back and visit again, will you? And uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, really, really cool. You You're uh, you know, friend of the show anytime. So keep us posted. To John, John right, Michaelowitz, everybody. See you, John. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah, so long. The Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.